Good evening folks and welcome to another Cyclone Chaser Cyclone video update today the 23rd of December 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo, this update is sponsored by our major sponsor Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Just a reminder that much of the stuff I'm going to talk to you about tonight I've already talked to subscribers about either yesterday or this morning. So to gain access to those special video updates, head over to our website ozcyclonechasers.com.au, click on subscribe to OCC, help support us in our documentary efforts for tropical cyclones and in turn we give you more in-depth coverage of what's expected to happen in the Aussie tropics. All right, let's get into it. On the OCC water vapor imagery here, we've got a lot of convective activity, very strong convective activity occurring. Well, one thing that this shows us is that there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. Anywhere north of about Ingham, Cardwell, a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, and that extends almost directly due west from that location all the way across Australia. Taking a look at some of the depth of that convection, we can see some very, very deep thunderstorms here are located in the southwestern parts of the Territory and then out past into the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf and into the Timor Sea. Now, we're going to see some of those squall lines making it onto the coast, folks, so brace yourselves. There's going to be uh, a lot of rain there overnight tonight. Across to Queensland, the Gulf of Carpentaria first, and we've got strong convective activity coming in on that monsoon. Also across Queensland, up around... Uh, Princess Charlotte Bay, all the way south to around about Cooktown, even as far south as Cairns. We've seen some very good convec convective uh, activity occurring along a convergence zone. Uh, we've got some also some very deep convection here at, in the northern gold fields and upper Flinders and into the northwest and gulf country regions of Queensland as well. Alrighty, the current setup shows a deep tropical low located to the southeast of Darwin, around about Adelaide River. I'll give you a quick look at radar shortly, uh, where you can see that turning very, very obvious here around Adelaide River. Now, that system is not expected to move offshore and develop into a tropical cyclone. Uh, however, obviously, it needs to be monitored because it is quite close to the coast. Now, it is expected... To, uh, over the next 12 to 24 hours to start moving in a northeast, then east, then southeast direction across into the Gulf of Carpentaria. And at this point in time, folks, there is a very high chance that this will become a tropical cyclone. So it's in the vicinity of 70 plus percent uh, chance of becoming a cyclone. Now, that is assuming, of course, it gets over water. Now, some of the computer models keep it over land for a significant period of its lifetime. Uh, so that would obviously then limit its chances of becoming a cyclone. But if it gets over water and remains over water for an extended period, for at least 24 hours or so, uh, then we don't see too many hindrances for this to become a TC. Not shown on this map, but there is a very, very weak uh, eddy on the monsoon trough, or a low, if you like, up here around Cooktown or Woodgel Woodgel in that region. And that's enhancing that convergence along the convergence line in the north tropical coast. It's also keeping a bit of shower activity away uh, from moving further to the south. So a lot of the activity now will be centralised up in this region for the coming couple of days. So here is the, the big low, the one that we're all watching into the long term because this is the one that's going to be a huge rain producer for Queensland, we're hoping, as well as the Northern Territory. So this, you can see it quite, uh, quite clearly here, spinning around, moving in a fairly uh, oh, moderate pace uh, towards the north or northwest. And it's expected, as I say, to start to slow that motion and change that motion to a north to northeast and then an east to southeast direction across the top end coast over the coming two days. The one up around Cairns, also quite easy to see, quite easy to spot. You can see it right here near Woodgel Woodgel, uh, spinning around just in that just in that area there. Nice little feeder band coming in uh, along that convergence zone. So that convergence zone really hasn't moved too far in the last 12 to 18 hours. It's sort of just stuck over Port Douglas uh, and uh, the Mossman area. Uh, but that little low that's developing here near Woodgel Woodgel, that can have the ability to enhance some rainfall, especially on its southern side overnight tonight. The boys and girls at the bomb are all over it. They already have identified the fact that there are going to be uh, some weak lows along that trough. None of them are expected to intensify into cyclones and therefore the potential for a tropical cyclone rated as very low at less than 5%. Completely different story though for the Gulf of Carpentaria. We are expecting that system to become a tropical cyclone, obviously on the proviso that it can remain over water or rather get over water to start with and then remain over water for a, a period of time, as I mentioned, about 24 hours or more. 
Right, uh, before we delve into the real low, we'll just have a quick look here at this low developing uh, around that Woodjil Woodjil area. You can see it's expected to be there. It's expected to enhance these winds. Notice these wind strengths here are around 25 to 30 knots uh, to its south side. So almost strong wind warning type winds located here on that southern fringe or, or southern flank of that tropical low. It's not really moving anywhere. You can see it here all the way into tomorrow morning. Hasn't really moved much. Does start to weaken though. And the expectation here is that you could see these little spin-ups all along the monsoon trough they're very very normal they don't mean that we're going to see you know half a dozen tropical cyclones we just see these things happen all the time they spin up they create a lot of rainfall in a short space of time and they die just as quickly Mind you, every every 20 or so of those, there is one that ends up spinning up and, and developing into a cyclone quite quickly too. But none of those uh, have uh, too much potential in doing so at this point in time on any computer models. And look, to be honest, if they were to spin up into tropical cyclones, the upper level environment is not going to be favourable for them to come back towards the coast anyway. They're going to be expected to move away to the east. So if we want weather, we don't want these to become cyclones. Uh, if we don't want weather and we want the weather to be taken away from us, uh, then if these do become cyclones, they will take and drag away a lot of the moisture that's making it onto the coast. So I'm sure I speak for most people. We really don't want these to become cyclones. And look, they're not expected to be. Look, folks, there is a computer model that we normally use, the GFS. It looked like it's completely misinterpreted the starting conditions, so we're going to disregard the GFS actual uh, run. We'll have a quick look at the ensemble and see what it does. And unfortunately, it appears that the ensemble is also almost as clueless. We have a situation here where half of the model members have initialized the low pressure system in Dar near Darwin there in the wrong spot, and only half of them have initialized it in the correct location. That already throws the entire thing out of whack a little bit. Uh, but if we look at the ones that did initialize it uh, correctly, we do see that track to the east over the coming few days. Now, those ones do uh, move the system off around about Groot Island uh, and uh, continue it in a southeasterly direction. And if we take a look into the longer term, here at around about December the 27th, we've got a situation where the low and the cyclone could be lying anywhere from the Northern Territory side of the Gulf of Carpentaria all the way through to around about a quarter way up the Cape. So there's a fair error margin here as we go through to landfall possibilities. Uh, at this stage, the GFS forecast model in general moves the system as a tropical low up to a maximum Category 2 cyclone. But the thing is, with computer models this far out, they are very, very bad at predicting tropical cyclone intensity. And this one is actually one of the worst at it. Alrighty, looking at the European model, we see a much better initialization of the system near the western top end. Moves it up uh, just to the west of Darwin, then tracks it away to the east, and you can see it here tracking away to the east across the northern top end coast, exits into the Gulf of Carpentaria sometime in Christmas uh, or early, very early overnight into early morning of Boxing Day. And we see the system intensify into a tropical cyclone, sort of drift around aimlessly for about a day or so, and then resume a southeasterly direction for a day, and then a south-southeasterly direction for a day, and then starts to move inland. Now, the longer-term projection of this system is very, very important for those farmers and graziers in this northwestern part of Queensland. Now if the system does move in this southerly direction and even in a south-southwesterly direction we're going to see very widespread rainfall uh, starting to move into the northwest parts of the state from the Gulf of Carpentaria. We're also going to see very widespread rainfall across the northeast coast of Queensland in a convergent flow, uh, assuming of course that the system moves in this direction. Now that's not all set in stone of course the, with this sort of system. There are there are some outlying models that do push the system across and into the, into the Coral Sea. There are similarly outlying models that push the system here, dies and the system just dies here in the southeast uh, Gulf of Carpentaria. There, this this is the most favoured scenario, this one here where it drifts southward, so there is a little bit of confidence in this at the moment, but don't, uh, don't get your hopes up just yet. It is a tropical cyclone slash tropical low, and it hasn't really formed yet, and it's not, uh, it hasn't really developed yet over the Gulf of Carpentaria, so we're not exactly sure how strong it's going to be. How strong it becomes will determine which option it ends up taking. 
Should the system bomb very, very quickly, it's going to take a very south to southwesterly direction. Should the system take a little bit longer to get going, uh, then we're looking at a more easterly direction. Uh, should the system uh, develop at the expect expected rate, then this scenario appears the most probable. Alrighty, into tomorrow. Now, the, uh, little, uh, the little spanner in the works is this little low here off the coast between Cairns and Cooktown. Now, it may enhance rainfall slightly more than what we're seeing here. The, the model here shows 50 to 100 millimetres on that northeast part of Queensland. However, don't be surprised if we see localised falls, especially if that uh, convergence area doesn't move overnight. We could see falls there of uh, closer to the 150, maybe even as high as 200 millimetres. But at this stage, the general consensus is mo in modelling is 50 to 100, grading to much lighter falls on the way south, all the way down to about Townsville being the cutoff of any rain. Uh, across the Western Peninsula, very heavy rainfall continuing. Uh, across the Gulf Country, we're still awaiting that low to enter, so really the focus of activity on that low is on the western flank, so areas like Darwin expecting some very heavy rain today and tomorrow, and even as far as tomorrow night. As we go to Friday, we can see that that activity starts to really push across the top of the top end, uh, around the Arnhem District, and we also see an increase now in in activity across the Gulf of Carpentaria. That's in preparation for uh, the tropical low to enter the area. We still have some isolated showers and thunderstorms across the Kimberley, extending into the interior of WA. Uh, now, the good news here is that eventually some of these storms will push further to the west towards the more populated Pilbara areas, but that's not until day four to six or day even three to six. All right. As we go to Saturday, on Saturday we've got a lot more conve convective activity occurring across most of the northern half of Queensland. So that means that this area of heavy rainfall around that Cairns to Cooktown area does start to move further to the south. Now at this stage the cutoff appears to be around about Rolling Stone to Ingham. Anywhere further to the south you're just looking at light to moderate falls on the Saturday. Now we're looking at moderate to heavy, even grading into heavy to very heavy flood uh, possible flood falls here on the southeast gulf. Uh, the southern Gulf of Carpentaria, depending on where that tropical low or tropical cyclone lies. We're going to see a very sharp, sharp clearance of activity, a sharp clearance of weather across the northern Kimberley and also across the western parts of the top end as that low drags away all of the, all of the monsoonal convergence. On Sunday, we're expecting to see that tropical cyclone or tropical low in the Gulf of Carpentaria tracking here to the south or southeast. And you can start to see these really heavy falls here on, along the Gulf Coast and extending into the northwest part of Queensland. This is really good news, but remember what I said, it's not set in stone. So it still can change and it probably will change. With these sort of systems, when they haven't fully developed yet, we don't know their intensity, we don't know exactly what's going to steer them and in what direction. Across the northeast coast of Queensland, the forecast is quite varied as well because if the system has already hit the coast uh, by the Sunday night, say for instance, we'll start to see very big increases in rainfall here across the tropical coast uh, as that northeasterly convergent flow increases in this region. Uh, so there, there is a lot of variability as we go to Sunday. So I don't really want to look past Sunday at this stage because up to even up to Saturday, uh, there's already starting to be a fair bit of variability. But as I mentioned, the three options here, uh, the first option is a, a much weaker system tracking uh, this way across the peninsula and back out into the Coral Sea. In this situation, only the very northern half of Queensland and particularly the northeast coast gets absolutely pummeled with rainfall. Uh, in this situation here, we can see the system tracking south, brings in a lot of moisture from the Gulf of Carpentaria, from the monsoon trough, and with those, uh, with that moisture, uh, we see that uplift because the low is still a feature, uh, and so we're going to see very heavy and widespread rainfall across most of the northwest, as well as most of the northeast coast on that flow. Uh, the other option, of course, is a very, very strong system, a system that strengthens much quicker than expected, probably going to track southwards much, uh, much sooner and will probably more affect the Northern Territory and the far northwestern parts of Queensland. This one is an unfavoured scenario. This one is an unfavoured scenario. The one that is favoured at the moment is this southward drift, and that's why you're seeing computer models showing up a lot more rainfall there on that particular option. You can start to see also this uh, activity around the Pilbara starting to get closer to the coast, which is good news. Hopefully someone, someone in these populated areas will pick up something. They really have missed out on this monsoonal burst and so has most of the Kimberley. We'll have another public update on Christmas night. Subscribers, you'll have two updates tomorrow, one in the morning, one at night, 
and one on Christmas morning in the meantime. Thanks for watching, folks. Enjoy your Christmas day and your Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas to you and your families. I'll talk to you again on Christmas night.